Hello everyone, I'm Maria and welcome to my stamping world. Today I want to show you how to make this explosion box. It measures about four by four and a half. It has a ribbon handle and it's closed with a Velcro clasp and it opens to reveal just like the explosion albums to reveal an area where you can put photos and in the center you could you could you could maybe make a gift card uh, holder um, whatever just use your imagination and this is just covered with um, designer series paper I won't be showing you today how to finish the inside of the box I'll just show you how to make the um, the uh, purse itself Some supplies you'll need, a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock in whatever color you wish, some designer series paper that I have already pre-cut, four and three quarters by four. This is for the front and the back of the, of the purse. You'll need uh, a vintage button. You'll need some Velcro. You can get this in the dollar store. Sticky tape nine inches of ribbon, a piece of five and a half by four glimmer paper or cardstock um, scored at two and three quarters on the back and two holes punched about an inch from the outer edge. Some large rhinestones. You'll also need your scoring, your simply scoring tool and your diagonal scoring plate. Now take the 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and score it at four and eight. Turn it and score it again at four and eight. Now for the next step, you'll need the diagonal plate. This is the diagonal scoring plate. And one thing that you have to remember is there's an arrow on the back and I've actually highlighted it um, so that I can see it easier. And that needs to be at the top of your scoring plate. And another thing I've done is with um, a, a highlighter as I have marked the, the, down the center of the scoring plate and a diagonal scoring plate and you'll see you'll see the reason for that shortly. Okay. Now what you want to do is score diagonally to the first the end of the first square. Again, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, maybe I'll just turn it over. At the bottom, do the same thing, but do not score diagonally the middle square. Now, what you do, the next thing you do is you just mark a six, the, the six inch point of the uh, scoring plate and you're going to be scoring like a triangle going this way and this way. And to go this way, what you do, I hope you can see this, is you line your six inch mark up with the marked score line and you mark the bottom and the bottom can move this so you can see what I'm doing with the bottom. The bottom you mark, you line up with the other marked score. So again, you line up your six inch mark and then line up the bottom. And you're going to score, whoops, six inch slipped. From there to 
the corner. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other one, only you're going to be now going the other way. So again, you're marking, you're lining up your six inch mark and then line up the bottom corner and score to the corner. So you have, I don't know if you can, if you can see the scoring. And then at the bottom, you do the same thing. Find a six inch, six inch point, then line that up and the line the bottom up with the middle score line and score from the six inch point to the corner. And you do the same with the other. You can see why I draw the line down the middle of the diagonal scoring plate. You can really um, see where you're scoring if you have to go from there to and score right to the corner. So in essence you have, see if I can mark it with a pencil to be able to see it a little better. You've got a score line going from here to here and you've got a triangular score line going from here to here. And you've got, okay, the only, the other thing you have to do is score the other corners from the end to here and the final corner. So what you have is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that is scored at four and eight, turned and scored at four and eight. And then with the diagonal plate, you're scoring each corner diagonally from the corner to the first, well, we'll call it intersection. And do that for all the corners all four corners and then in the middle one you're finding the halfway point which is six and you're lining that point up with the bottom of your the line that you have marked and then score from that line to the intersection and you do the same thing with the other side So it's certainly much easier to do if you if you mark your diagonal plate uh, down the middle and um, you can match up the top and the bottom of your 12 by 12 piece of paper a lot easier. Now I know my camera doesn't show it uh, very well but I, I hope you, you, you get the idea. Um, the pencil mark again you can see and then in this corner I've got another score line. So that's what your your scored paper and then you've got your middle score lines. So this is the top, the bottom looks exactly the same. Okay, nothing is done in the middle because that becomes the front and back of the box. Now fold along all of the score lines. corner score line folds in all the four corners do that they fold they fold in and the center ones fold towards the center now before you go on to make your box there's one extra step to do in that you take your trimmer and you cut the corners off. 
and you go from score line to score line. Oops, let me do this right. There we go. And you cut off all four corners. So your finished purse should look like this. Got the four corners cut off. Okay, now you just fold it. It should come in by itself if you've um, done your scoring properly. Just fold into there's your basic basic purse now at this point I like to put the designer paper on the front and the back you don't have to put designer paper on I just do Now, at this point, I like to make this part of the purse, the top and the handle. And to do that, oh, knocking things over here, you take your glimmer paper, and you can use ordinary cardstock if you wish. I've just chosen to use glimmer paper. And take the largest of your labels framelit and using your magnetic plate, um, cut the um, glimmer paper so that this is flat and this is flat. See how I've marked it, how I've laid it out. When it's cut, you have the notches at both ends, but the sides are flat. Then with the paper punch, you punch um, a hole about, about an inch from either side. And this is where I've scored it at two and three quarter inches. And you put a little bit of a sticky strip underneath it. Just move my purse underneath it. And you take your ribbon and just a little tip. If you, if you wanna put your ribbon through a small hole, cut your ribbon at an angle. And then you just have to insert the point through the hole. Make sure the ribbon is straight and not twisted. You've got the same amount. You don't need much at the back. Now you can see the reason for the sticky strip. Just press the ribbon down and that'll hold, that'll hold the ribbon in place. Now you're going to be adhering this to one end of your purse. So at this point, I like to put a bit more sticky strip on. There. Now, 
take that and now you can add the, the Velcro you take one piece off and put it in the center and the other You cut and you leave the paper on the backing. Just lay it on top. There. Now for the front, we're going to make a little handle. And I'm using the vintage faceted buttons, the large one. And you'll need a you'll need a glue gun to attach that. Um, because I tell you, nothing sticks to the glimmer paper except hot glue. And then I put a large rhinestone in the center of the button. There. Now we can attach this. This, this goes to the back of the box. So I will fold the box up again. And it doesn't matter which side is the back of the box or, or not. Remove the backing from the sticky strip. This probably takes the longest is getting the backing off the sticky strip. And you place the fold mark over the center. Now you can see the reason why I left the backing on the second piece of Velcro. You can take it off at this point and make sure this is centered. Separate the back row and burnish it a little bit. And voila, your purse is made. All you have to do is decorate the center, which does take a little bit of time. So just to show you some of the other purses that I've made, uh, here's one that is for a wedding and notice I just used cardstock for the lid. When you open it up I've decorated the center in black and then used some of the little roses here. This one is for a baby and I used I used a different button for that. So those are those are the little purses um, that I've made. I've had um, several requests to um, have a tutorial done for this uh, purse, and I, I hope that um, my camera caught the scoring properly. Um, but thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just um, go ahead and ask, and I'll see if I can answer them. Okay. Um, 
again, this is Maria from um, craftymariastampingworld.blogspot.com. Can't even talk anymore. Anyway, again, thanks for watching.